Today, we are going to repair my Fender Frontman 15R combo amplifier. As you can see, you have to pull off all of the knobs and unscrew all the nuts on the pots. You got to take the nuts off the jacks and take the screw off the RCA auxiliary input. Don't forget the headphone jack. Flip it over and take off all six screws to get access to the board on the inside. I had to use a couple tools to pry it open and I pre-labeled the three wires on the power connector so that they would be easily connected when we put this thing back together. White, green, and black. There are two screws that attach to the front plate of the cabinet. I'm using a long extension to get them out, but you could use a regular screwdriver. Either way, take your time. Don't damage anything. I'm also disconnecting the lead wires that go to the speaker and the wires that connect the reverb tank to the circuit board. Finally, we remove the two screws from the top of the amplifier, hold on to uh, the underside of the amp while you release the last screw so that nothing falls and everything stays in place. Once you remove the screws, you can lean it down and then slowly navigate the PC board and the faceplate, control faceplate through the cavity. It's a tight fit, so take your time. Now we have removed the faceplate and the circuit board. This amp right here has a busted plastic input, which is why we are pulling it apart and fixing it. This replacement part I found online. You can see it's got four pins. It's plastic. It's kind of fragile. That's why it broke in the first place. So we want to take a lot of care when we put this thing back together. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. Loosen these two screws to separate the PC board from the faceplate. Now that we're looking at the back of the PC board, you can see these four connection points that we have to desolder to remove the part from the PC board. Here we have a desoldering tool that sucks hot solder into it to help you remove the part. You heat up a solder joint with a soldering iron and then hit the button to suck the solder out. and then you can pull out the old part. You can see this one's pretty damaged. No use for that. So you can see this four pin is brand new. It should fit into these empty slots that you cleaned up with the desoldering suction tool. Now I found a, a way to level it so I could uh, apply solder. Take your time. I'm not uh, in any rush, so I make sure to double check it, make sure these joints are fully melted and fully, you know, connected. Double check it, and looks like uh, that was pretty easy. All right, now that we have the new jack installed, we got to put it all back together. First, we're going to attach the PC board to the faceplate. Take your time, line up all the holes, 
And then the PC board is connected to the faceplate with two screws on the back side. It's much easier to use a regular screwdriver as opposed to a electric one because it's kind of delicate. You need to reconnect the transformer to the PC board and the power switch had two connectors which I labeled one and two so I didn't confuse them when I put them back you know the same way I disconnected them now that I have it open and all the repairs are done I'm just gonna do a little cleanup with a baby wipe get some of that grime off and then with all the pots and the board reseated I'm gonna start by adding the screw that attaches the RCA auxiliary inputs to the faceplate. And then I'm going to do the same with the washers and nuts for all the potentiometers. I take extra care putting the washer the nut on the uh, the new part because it's made of plastic and if you tighten it too much you could break it so just uh, just enough just so it's right and now brand new part good to go since I have the knobs off I put them in a solution of Windex and uh, cleaned them up a little bit before putting the unit back into the cabinet, making sure that it's flush to the front and to the top of the cavity. Take your time, make sure to get it where you need it to be before securing the two handle screws which mount the faceplate to the cabinet on the inside. Now that the handle is secured, we can reconnect the screws on the inside that secure the faceplate to the front of the cabinet. Two small screws with big heads on them. Again, I'm going to use the, the drill with the extension to easily attach them to the cabinet. Just take a quick check, make sure that it's flush and mounted correctly, and we're good to go. I'm going to reconnect the lead wires that go to the reverb tank, and also reconnecting the lead wires that go from the PC board to the speaker. Make sure that the polarity is right. The white is the plus side, the black is the ground. Same thing with the tank. Make sure they go on as they came off. Now we just got to put the back plate to uh, close up the cabinet. I labeled the white, green, and black connectors for the power. And so we just connect them accordingly. 
and we're good to go. We can seal up the box. Redo all of the nuts on the front. Put in the original knobs and test it out. So that's a repair for a broken input jack on a frontman, Fender frontman, 15R.